What is good, Council of Comics? It is April 14th, 2024. It's 5 o'clock. It's time for film and box office news. We're doing Austin Powers Gold Member today. I am a sexy beast. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Pure gold! What about diamonds? And platinum. Don't forget opium. Also smoked salmon. It's good, Council of Comics. Like Phil said, welcome to the Film and Box Office News Live Podcast, episode number 82 for this April 14th, 2024. We got a lot to talk about. We got some X-Men 97 and, of course, our film of the week, Gold Member. A what? A schmoke and a pancake. You know, flapjack and a cigarette? Hmm? All right. Cigar and a waffle? No. Pipe and a crepe? Brightest day. Where are the heroes? Soon as they get here, everything will be alright. I need a hero. Welcome to the Film and box office news live podcast where every Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific, we go over all the film and box office news, what's been on the TV, the boob tubes, and we review our favorite movie of the week. As always, please like and subscribe if you have not done so yet. And as always, our loyal counsel, Cliff, Phil, Green Shirt Guy, C. Bizzle, and Papa Wheelie, how are you today? Making it we're all okay. We're here. We're here. Yeah. We're all hurting in one way or another, Council of Comics. <laughs> but we are here. And I'm excited to be here because I love the show and I love to talk about film box office news. We got a lot to talk about. Um, we got some things to update you about, but we'll do that later on at the end of the show. First things first, as we always do. Young at Heart Foundation, this is an organization run by our good friend Mike. Faith, trust, belief is their motto out in California. They do great things for kids waiting medical procedures out in California. There are a couple ways that you can help uh, with this organization. You can become a donor by hitting this button right here, register to become a donor. Uh, more than 100,000 people are waiting for a life-saving transplant. You can help them by registering as an organ donor today with Donut at Life America. The second way you can help is to sponsor a Hope Kit. All, it's 100% tax deductible. All the funds go into a pile where they separate and make these nice little gift boxes for the kids where they put toys, comics, everything in there for them. It's great, great things. If you want to do that or you want to help Mike in another way, give him a call at 323-396-9998 or email him at info at youngatheartfoundation.com. All ten of us. Let me get this out of here. This is our home away from home. And a little chat right there. It's located in Hyde Park, New York. It's run by our good friend, Anthony. They have... What is going on here? Right. Ooh, they, have, they specialize in comics, cars, and toys. They offer the Hudson Valley's best selection of comic books. And if you want to start a pull list of comic books, no matter where you are in the United States, you can get 10% off your comic books. How are you going to do that? You're going to give Anthony a call at 845-233-4234 or email him at alterniverse2 at aol.com. Uh, the website is alterniverse.net, and he'll hook you up with all that stuff. They also do card tournaments on the weekends, Lorcana, Pokemon, Magic. Give him a call. He'll give you the uh, schedule for that. Our YouTube channel. After a nice little lull of not getting anything, we got like six subscribers these past couple days, which is pretty good. So we're up to 827 on our march to 1,000. We got a lot of videos, new comic book day, the last one's up. We also have an announcement that we'll also do at the end of this uh, show about new comic book day live. Yes, you're like, what? Live? Yes, it's going to be a change for a little bit, but it's still going to be phenomenal. So please hit that subscribe button. Tons of videos on the channel. We also have Cliff on Comics. Cliff, you have anything to say about your channel? I'm there. I got 
random stuff. Ha I, I gotta come up with something a little more regular and that also is not taxing because I don't know what to do lately, you know? Uh, last Thursday of the month, I will do another episode of Cliff's Crisis Quest. And as usual, you can find me here at the Council of Comics, random stuff on my channel. Durves, Durves is sesh at, at six on Sundays. Tony's Commonverse Saturdays at 7 p.m. And half that stuff I stream to my channel too, so that's fun. Excellent. Please make sure you are subscribed to Cliff on Comics. We also got C. Bizzle in the house, couching and slouching with C. Bizzle. Let them know what your channel's about, C. Bizzle. So, it's about unboxing. I got this huge AOK -okay that I can go through. This box is 12 pounds. That I'm, there's gonna be a video coming soon with that, um, and more stuff. Um, I love talking about comic books. Um, I love the comic book community and the people that's in it. Um, so my my channel is is gonna be reflective of that. So I hope you guys uh, go to my channel and enjoy it as much as I love putting these videos out. For real, shout out to everybody in the chat blowing up real quick. Go subscribe to Couching and Slouching with C Bizzle. Let's see who's in the comments. Our loyal fans, Meatwad number one, thank you for joining us tonight. Phil's Treehouse, thank you for joining us tonight. S Vaughn eighty two, what up, homie? Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Christina Payne, thank you for joining us tonight. DB and Chill, thank you for joining us tonight. And Trev the Shipping Guru, what up, Trev? Thank you for joining us tonight. The J Margolis is in the house, a winner of a past duck. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's film and box office news. We got some things to talk about. I want to get right into it. I want to get right into it. Because my God, there has not been something like this <laughs> in in television and animation when's in the years. Last time, when's the last years. time a TV show traumatized America so good? Oh my goodness! Yeah, just because yeah. it traumatized you, just because it didn't try to. I mean, no, you it's all right. It's not going to please everybody. That's fine. That's no, totally but let's fine. Say, let's say eighty percent. Eighty percent got caught. Got caught up in it. <laughs> yeah. X-Men 97 season 1 episode 5 Remember it Here's my little spiel about it And I, I remember seeing the title Didn't think nothing of it Didn't <laughs> think nothing of the title Until this Oh my god When he said Gambit's the name Remember that was badass, right? like, my, that whole was a badass thing, my whole emotional thing was like This is the greatest thing I've seen in so yeah. long Let's talk about it Let's talk about it. Who wants to go? I All right, I'll go first. The minute I read the title of the episode, I knew it was trouble. Oh, um, I thought it was like, you know what? This was the episode. I thought it looked least like X-Men 93 or whatever. Yeah, 100%. As the, uh, like, I thought this looked the least and more like this is its own X-Men show. And it kind of, I feel like this might have been the, the show that this is the show it comes into its own. Where we needed like yeah. four little episodes to get us to here. This is the show now. It looks like like this is the one that it came into its own. Um, I don't think we would have gotten like this at eleven thirty in the morning on Saturday no. morning. <laughs> like, there's no way, right? No, not at all. Um, the other thing is though, is I said how like you know the DC animated kind like universe kind of grew with us. This did it in like a half hour, where DC did it all through. Like Batman has just always been there since like yeah. the nineties. So yeah. this did it, and it kind of did it, and it did it well. So it was a great episode. I enjoyed it. Yeah, there's anybody else. I'm not, I got so much to say. But anybody else got anything to say about this? I it's like funny. Nightcrawler. I, I, I like the Nightcrawler. Have, I do not have Disney Plus, but God dog it, I've seen the clip. I, I, I've seen every clip. I don't even need to have Disney Plus to watch this anymore. This is. <laughs> I like seeing Nightcrawler. I thought the stuff with Gam or not Gam, but with Rogue and um, Magneto was interesting, and that that whole dynamic. But I, I get I, I'm not getting into the show. I'm trying, I'm trying. It just it's not doing it for me. It may, and I'm sure, obviously I'm the outlier, but you know that's fine though. It's not going to please everybody. Um, I'm not saying it's bad. I just I 
it's it's well done. I just don't care. <laughs> Is that, I, I don't mm. know why. I just don't know. But what did you? You didn't feel anything in those last like five eh, ten minutes? Because I know he's not dead. Oh no, baby, he's dead. Oh, no, he's, he's dead he, now. He, now he may come back, but he's dead. Yeah, he's dead right now. Yeah, he may yeah, come yeah, back. He's for dead. what an Listen, episode, you, maybe two. All right, is no, he dead like Jason Todd? Dead season. Or is he dead like you know Miss Marvel? Like Uncle Ben. <laughs> he's not yeah, well, dead like Uncle Ben. That's it. That's all. Yeah. That's all. No, I, listen. He's he's at least dead like Miss Marvel. He right? might not. I don't even think he's dead like Bucky. Well, dead like Bucky's pretty harsh because well, that was like, forty years. He's dead. He he's dead in the he's sense dead. that he's, okay, he he is he, dead. He may come back later like through a cable. Going time travel, absolutely and not. I think that would be happening. the one, the best case scenario. The best case scenario is Apocalypse snags his corpse to mm, make, make him, him make death. death. Yes, right. The worst case scenario yep. as a viewer would be for Cable to succeed because it would take everything away from this, right? Because the whole point. Right of us getting caught up in the moment where they just started digging the knife into us is that Madeline spots her son, which is Cable, right? Yeah. And that's immediately when the feel started started taking me. And when he's when he looks so desperate, like he cannot stop this, right? And we see the Watcher. We see the Watcher yeah. previously. Yeah. So we know this event is special. Watchers don't just look at nothing, right? Mm -hmm. So... That is so much happening there when he goes, I'm sorry, mom, and the explosion happens. Yeah. Like shit. I was and I was we were giving fun. we were given that moment earlier in the season when Madeline was having those visions. Yeah, the there was a whirlwind of a guy saying, uh, he's coming or something like that. Like, and and I didn't even think about it until I watched like another video where everybody's pointing out the Easter eggs. And I was like, there are so many things in the show that they've placed in there to come back yeah. later. I'm like, you did your work with this show. Absolutely. You they need to hire that man back immediately. And my number one suspect for this show of who is he, who is coming is Bastion. It's Bastion. He's in because it. Because it works on every level. Bastion is a 90s X-Men villain. He's heavily tied mm -hmm. to the Sentinels. It does not overlap with Cassandra Nova, who's going to yeah. probably show up in Deadpool, so we don't have any convoluted and, stuff going on there with the characters. And, so that is my vote. And to let you know who Bastion is, Bastion is a... There was a, a, a character called Nimrod who uh, melded with Master Mold, another major sentinel, and they got knocked through the Siege Perilous. And the Siege Perilous was like a, I don't know, some kind of artifact that if you go through it, it bring you back, but it will either wipe your memories or change you and stuff like that. But when it got knocked through, because Rogue knocked it through the Siege Perilous, um, and people thought she was dead as well, uh, when that thing came back, they uh, the Siege Perilous gave it flesh. And that's how Bastion came to be. And he didn't even know who he was until a little bit later when he got his memories back and he realized who he was. Now, there is a scene where Magneto's walking into the Hellfire Gala and he looks up and very split second, Bastion walks by and you see the top of his head. It was little stuff like that. You didn't even notice. It was like, they are doing their work on this show. Speaking of, speaking of work, I want to say to Sam, the fact that your X-Men X -Men knowledge is on point, and I appreciate you, sir. Oh, we love the X-Men. We love the X-Men. I'm, I'm in a running with Cliff, though. Cliff's X-Men knowledge is, is, is pretty deep. <laughs> oh, you, you, know, you know I came I came fully prepared. Cliff, Cliff was watching me when I was just explaining Bash. Where did Rogue emerge from the Siege Perilous? Um, in the Savage Lands. That's right, where she yeah. had her little probable yeah. affair with Magneto. Yeah, and that's where they got that outfit yeah. from. Um, yeah. Gambit at the end, the ultimate hero, bro. He was yeah. saving everybody. He saved Rogue when he put the the he made the bike charge up and he knocked her out of the way of the thing. And I'm just mm -hmm. like, go Gambit, go! But when he was running up to go against the Sentinel and, and, right, and, and got and him through the scared. side, oh. yeah, and it got him through the side. I was like, oh no! But then he said the line, and I was like, oh, you are a legend. You are yeah. a legend. 
Oh my goodness. It was so yeah, great. I gotta tell you, my prior to his death, my favorite gambit moment in the episode was rescuing the Morlocks. Because Homegirl was like, Leech, the X-Men are no friends to Morlocks. And then boom, oh. the freaking thing comes in, he blows up the sentinel head, and he rescues them. And I'm like, oh, I have a theory that Magneto is not dead. I think Leech took his powers, and that's Everybody why the, thinks that. Everybody why the thinks Sentinel that. says, like, uh, neutralized or whatever, yeah. or something like that. Because so it think... makes perfect sense. Magneto doesn't appear as a mutant on the radar. It stops its blast. They're buried under the rubble. Yeah. But, yeah, this was... Uh, anybody got anything else to say about it? Whew. No, but I, 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 uh, I, like I wanted to... Uh, I wanted to talk about another thing before we move on another show that's all all right so that's x-men 97 leave in the comments what you guys thought about that wait we got we got a couple i didn't mean to do it that way that's fine that's fine um boom okay go ahead phil you're good uh all right so anybody watched fallout yet it came out uh this week i I, that's it's on my to-do list okay because yeah i watched uh this was the other thing i watched Friday and Saturday, besides Coachella. Coachella was this weekend, too. And yeah, a lot of people, like, I watched that all day yesterday. Sublime was great. No Doubt was great. ACs was great. Ray was great. Ice Spice. But uh, Friday night, I spent it watching Fallout. Friday and Saturday morning. It's eight episodes. Um, For a show based off of a video game like Fallout, it's actually, like, really good. There's, uh, there's like, dark humor. There's even, like, some a bit of horror. Um... Yeah, I, I, I pretty much enjoyed it. Um, Where can people it, watch this? Uh, watch Fallout. So it, it helps if you've played the game and you have an idea of what you're going. Mm-hmm. Um, you're getting a Fallout story. Is uh, you, so you're not going to see any like the characters that you've seen before in the games. Uh, but you'll know you'll you'll hear locations and things like that. What? Well, I don't I don't play a lot of video games anymore. So what okay. is Fallout about? Uh, what Fallout is about is uh, pretty much like the nuclear war has happened like 200 years ago. And like select humans have lived in these vaults underground. And like these vaults, like, you know, they're all across America and they're like opening up. You know, people are getting out and uh, each game has like a different thing. Like uh, Fallout 3 is like one of the great ones to start with. Uh, it takes place in Washington, D.C., so it's nice. like the capital wasteland that you're going out into. And it's like the DC wasteland. So all like the DC landmarks are in the game. Like there'll be like the White House and and you'll have like different missions in the wasteland and stuff. But it's like a, like a Skyrim game in the wasteland. It's one of, also one of those games that you could play for like 12 hours. I think like six hours only went by. Nice. I feel like, yeah, you could play this. And in... is Walton Goggins good in it? Uh, very good, yes. Okay. I uh, always like him, so I was like, I saw that he was a tat or you know, one of the main characters. I'm like, I am just waiting to see him kind of jump I hear he's screen. one of the one of the best things in the show, and I hear what's his name from Twin Peaks is great in the show. Colin McLaughlin is great. Uh yeah, for Twin Peaks. Um I don't know if anybody remembers Michael, I think it's Michael Emerson from like Lost. Yes. Which one yeah, was it, he? Remind me. Uh what was he? Uh he was the guy. He was like the leader. Uh, he did person of interest too. But he oh, was, Ben. He, he was Ben. Yes. On yeah, there we go. Yes. Okay. I couldn't think of his name. Where, right where can somebody watch this at? Amazon. Yeah, it's on Amazon. Prime. Amazon Prime. Oh, Fallout is on Prime? Yeah. Amazon, yeah, Fallout is oh, on Amazon Prime. If, if, if you go on Prime, oh, they, it's splashed look at everywhere. This cast. They even dug Moses Marius out from the dead. This is amazing. Yeah, Kyle McLaughlin. <laughs> Johnny Pemberton, who else we got? Oh my God, Serena Chandri from 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 just like that, the sequel to Sex in the City. She's there. Ooh, Who's that hello. guy? Who's that guy? Oh, that's the guy who. Uh, that's Walt oh, Goggins. Yep. Yep. Well, I mean the character. Like, well, what is he? I'm I'm curious. He's a ghoul. So he's been he's been changed by the radiation. He's also been alive for like the 200 years since the war wow. started. Yeah, wow. so he's been changed from like the radiation and stuff, and he's been like a bounty hunter since the war started. So, so. is he a good guy or a bad guy or antihero? Uh, a bit antihero. Okay. Oh All my right. god, who's Chet and why is Chet hot? I tell you, oh, I tell you what I did watch this week. 
I'm watching the air. I'm going to be Did watching you, this you, all week. Bluey. Oh, oh my goodness, Bluey. Dude, you got to watch Bluey. It's great. And the new ones are amazing. Listen, oh, it's Bluey. Amazing. Bluey, you got to prepare yourself for Bluey. You think it's a kid's show? It is not. It's it There's not. levels to it. Like, if yes. you, you can watch it as a kid and enjoy it, you can watch it as a parent and you see the humor in it. And, yes. then, and then there's things that hit you right in the feels. That's a great show. Man. Yeah, my son Yo, loves that, that show. episode about Bluey not seeing their summer camp friend again. And I'm yes. like, this is about death. I was like, I don't yeah. care how this show is yeah. trying to <laughs> this. I was like, why are we planting a tree in memory of your friend? What is yeah. it? It's like, oh, look, there's your buddy like 10 years later. And I'm like, oh, okay. My yeah. favorite episode, or one of them, is the one where they go to the, uh, the yard sale with the old woman. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and, mm-hmm. and they introduce the third granny. Oh. And, then, and she ends up selling the, the scooter for like $1,400 or whatever. <laughs> What's it on? Yeah. You just have to be careful with that show. It will hit you in the, in the feels mm-hmm. more than once. What uh, streaming service is it on? Disney Plus. Disney yeah. I think it's on the Disney Channel if you still have regular television or cable. And they have uh-huh. some episodes on YouTube because my son watches them on his tablet. Right. The Have you seen the, the, the cut scene from the one where they went to the carnival? No. Do you know the one where they go to the carnival and they're trading everywhere and the, to get different yes. things? And they yeah. and they meet the uh the uh, unicorn. Uh-huh. There's a scene <laughs> there's a scene that got cut out from the Disney Plus thing. Look it up, you can find it on YouTube. Where the horse that it's a horse with a you know the thing, it poops and they and the, the girls scream and run away. But they cut the poop scene out of it. <laughs> <laughs> plus version. Boy, these these suits are pretty crazy. Are these like yeah. the mech suits that the people in the silos create, or is this something on the outside? Oh, uh, so. this is something on the outside. These are this is a power armor. And these guys, oh, the guys yeah. that wear this are the Brotherhood of Steel, which is in like another faction in the wasteland. Oh, okay. Is it just a uh a struggle for power they each kind of have their own regions uh they they each have their own like reasons and there's also like a MacGuffin that they're after and stuff so okay. hmm. now you got me interested something me and kamari can watch we was looking for another show and the core plot is the same core plot from the video game right a, a little bit a little bit of a core plot from the video game there was like yeah. a few things that I was like, I know what that is happening here because I played the video game a lot. <laughs> so, because yeah. I did play right, these games like, a lot. It's it's just enough video game plot to bring you in if you've already played the games, but yeah. not so overwhelming that if this is your first rodeo, like, you know, you're not you're not you're not sidetracked by it. But the characters are good. The char- and and you know what Phil explains to me. The characters all seem just a little bit on the wooden side. Now, do you think that that's intentional based on the nature of the environment that they've all lived in? And so, like, that's kind of the tone the show is setting? Or do you think that that's, like, its own little surprise? Um, You know, I think it is a little bit the tone that it is setting. Because there are things, like, and I thought, like, the pacing, too. Like the pacing for this show is very perfect that you could binge watch all eight episodes almost in an evening. Uh, how long? Is it an hour? Uh, I think they're about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. So yeah, you could watch it. This is the pacing is done. So you could go through it in like an evening. Or it took me back. like two because I started. Put that back up. Uh, uh, apparently, uh, I'll also be watching Taylor Swift. I'm not watching. Papa Willie says, <laughs> uh, finally, the Taylor Swift era tour, Taylor's version on Disney Plus. Three and a half hours. No chance. No, I, watched, I, don't think I did I watch that. Elton John fight Farewell Tour court concert, though, <laughs> when that was on. Shout out to Strange Dog Comics, though. Thank you for joining us. We sure right. I found the clip. <laughs> What's that? I found the bluey clip. Oh, did you think amazing, right? And don't they make a joke about Germans right after it too? Yeah, yeah. I can't turn it up because I don't want no no copyrights. Right, 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 right. Yeah. All right. Anybody else watch anything else before we move on? Uh, what? I what did I? I watched uh, Bad Batch. Oh, Bad Batch. Oh, Bad Batch. Oh my goodness. Did the was it me or did the animation get a lot crisper? A hundred percent. 
right? Like they're preparing us for the final episodes and they're like, we're going to crank right. out the best animation it, that we can for this. It's 16, right? It's going to? I don't know. I think, possibly, it, I think it is. Possibly that, that means 16. there's four left. There's yeah, because they're, they're gonna end big, baby. End it big. Well, let, let's see what predictions you guys think. What do you think? What do you think is gonna be the end goal? Like, what is the emperor and Mount Tan Mount Tantus? What is he? What are they doing? What's that end goal? I'm not. It's gotta be cloning, right? Yeah, it has to because everything the, has been. But cloning back. what? Is it like the first Snoke, or is it like the first Palpatine body? That goes wrong or yeah it, it, it probably that it'll probably end up being the first snoke because they'll try to clone palpatine it's like oh it didn't really work did it well mm. now well let me ask you this though with four episodes left does omega live yes <sighs> that's a not only do i think guy. omega will live i that's think we will one. meet her in live action where in live action though because that in means one of Star Wars in, episode in one 10. Of the <laughs> but she, okay, so that means she had to have gone somewhere then because she's not in the original trilogy. Right. And there's no okay, mention of no her. one's in the original trilogy, and half these mofos are alive. And so she's not, not and she's not in the sequel trilogy. And and, and no right. mention of her. Not even just not that she's in it. Like yeah. no whisper of anything with her or the bad it's a guy. very big i 100 percent believe the, the the remaining clones of the bad bats are gonna die that i think is, i is think a so no too. brainer Ooh. i think so too they're gonna die sad. defending something and one at a, one at a time that seems and like I the think, disney way think, now i think yeah. um not tech um, i think that's tech though i think that that bounty you think hunter, so? i think that's tech I think what's the sniper guy? Because yeah, we never guys? saw a body. Cross, yeah. I think Crosshair is going to be the last to go. Probably. I think he's going to be the one defending the other ones, and he's going to be the last one to, to get it. Mm, wow, such a great show. I, I, I could be wrong, but you know, the music in that show and the way they like, they they yes. don't care. We're going to slow pace this, make you feel this, boom, boom, boom. Well, and, and the it's... music works with every scene that's in. Yeah, and I was telling Kamara. Does it look like better? Like, look at this. Detail. Yo, that the episode, animation, like that episode where Omega turned herself in. I was yes. like, oh my god! Yep, that yeah. was so well but done. Omega has a plan. We know she Omega. Does. No, Omega has got a plan, plan. But let's be honest. Let's be honest. You know damn well that plan is hanging on a thread because yeah. well, she's just like, mm. she's probably <laughs> basing it that they're gonna find her. He's, she's putting hope that they're gonna find me, and this plan is gonna work out. Do we think that Omega is gonna be able to manifest her gifts, if you will? Right. I do wonder mm. if she's like secretly a Jedi waiting to happen. She is, because Asajj hinted at it. She just did. Because remember, she's like, she's like, well, is she force sensitive? She a Jedi? And she goes, no. And uh, Crosshair goes, you're lying. He could tell well, that she yeah. was lying. Yeah. But she doesn't want Omega to know about that yet. Correct. For some reason. What did you, and you said well, you said you like Ventress's to... new haircut. Huh? You like Ventress's new haircut. I mean, she didn't have hair before, so you know it's fine. That's what it, is. It, it was fine. And I knew who she was the first time before Ventress, when she came on screen. Ventress is actually from what we're hearing, she was brought back to life because she died in Dark Disciple the novel. That's what, toward the end of the Clone Wars. And remember, at the end of the episode, she was like one of my many lives, or I have. So another maybe life. she's the first clone. I think she's gonna have a lot to do with Dave Filoni's, uh, with Thrawn going to um, Dathomir, Ooh. and all that stuff. I think she'll probably Ooh. show up later, and we're gonna see Ventress in live action. I think. Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. All right, that was a great talk there, y'all. Let's get to some box office Ooh. news. Ooh. Civil War is Yo, number trash. one. <laughs> trash Civil War. Trash. <laughs> you didn't like it? What? What? Who liked it? Who liked it? Stevens, are you trying to talk? Can you hear me? You, now we can. Can you hear yeah. me? Uh, yeah, I hear you. Okay. Cliff, you saw it? You saw it? I saw, I saw enough of it <laughs> to want <laughs> out, to turn it off. 
the reviews overall have not been good for the movie um there's just saying it's you know they show you a lot of stuff in the trailer that's not really the movie it's just following some reporters throughout the whole thing but i don't even know if i want to watch the movie because it's like at the time we're at in the united states right now like to make a movie like this first of all the director's not even from the united states so it's complete fiction yeah yep but okay it, and and his the way he like supposedly set things up people are like that would never happen <laughs> so, <laughs> like, so go into it as, as, as it's a fiction yeah watch i'll it watch that. it eventually but i was Dude, just like i uh, went into it as a fiction and i stepped away from it as bored af <laughs> wow i'm yeah. shocked about that one all that right one. like let me because we uh all right one of the things and it was kind of true when clip said it especially about my was a uh, propaganda movie is this like more of a propaganda movie than say the has fallen movies? <laughs> like, I mean, I, here's the thing: I, I, wherever you land on the political spectrum, I, both sides hate it. So okay. So if you know what I mean, so it is like bad. Then <laughs> like it's right. just bad. What I heard what was it California and Texas where they team up. <laughs> I thought it was Florida and Texas. Was it Florida? No, I think it's Florida, Florida and Texas, which makes no, no it makes no sense. <laughs> no, it, when, it makes None. no sense because geographically they're too far apart. <laughs> so, um, so you—that's how you know somebody not from this country wrote. This. Well, no, they're not. They're not the only forces to team up. They're just the leading forces to team up, right? Um, and but it still doesn't make no sense because in real life those are the last two mofos to team up. You know. <laughs> Yeah. So like, so we're supposed to believe that they've got like Texas and Cali, and they've got like a little network of states between them that work together, right? But like, even still, it's so like, like I'm giving you more detail about it than the movie does. This but is what, I, yeah, what I've heard is what Cliff is saying. Um, one positive note: this is A24's biggest opening weekend as a as a studio. Um, okay, that's, that's a positive for them, I guess. Um, but Godzilla versus Kong staying strong in there at number two, only drop my... of fifty percent. Uh, Ghostbusters coming in at number three, staying strong. Uh, for for yeah. a weak start, uh, Ghostbusters is staying strong, only dropped thirty five percent. Um, Kung Fu Panda drops only forty percent. I keep hearing good things about Kung Fu Kung Fu Panda. I do as well. Uh, yeah. Doom Part Two still hanging in there, uh, only dropped forty percent. Uh, let's see where Dune is at. Dune is at six hundred and eighty-three million. Hold your man. Um, Good for you, Dune too. I, I'll give it seven fifty, maybe eight. Is what I'll give it. Maybe. maybe. I mean, what's coming out that's going to challenge it as far as action movies? Um, because there's no reason for them know. to take it out, take it out of theaters anytime soon. Um, except it's coming out. <laughs> like <laughs> it's coming out to like digital, right? And DVD and all that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't I don't know of any big big movies that are coming out. Um, I was gonna say I, I would have said Monkey Man is more of a like for like when you're talking about action movies, but it it obviously it didn't do enough to knock Dune you know, see yeah, exactly. Dune made Monkey that Man, what, Friday million. by seven o'clock. It's for a week. I do want to see Monkey Man though, because I heard it's good. Just for what I've heard about um Dev Patel doing like everything, writing, directing, producing, like acting, like I like to see projects like that. Um he's basically he went to people to try to make that movie and nobody wanted to make it, and he was just like, you know what, I'll make it myself. Right. And he did it. And that, that's that's awesome. Uh the first omen. Uh, drops 54%. Um, new one, The Long Game comes in with a million. Shrek 2 re release. What's, what's I, The Long Game? The Long Game. In 1955, five young Mexican American caddies, out of the love for the game, were determined to learn how to play. So they created their own golf course in the middle of the South Texas desert. Yeah. Sorry. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> you see? I'm not like I don't I'm not dying to see that, but the fact that that's based on a true story does have me a little interested. That's the only but, um, reason I would watch it. And that's one of those like I'm sitting home on a Saturday afternoon I'm like, yeah, I'll watch yep. this. But I'm not yeah. going to look for it. 
That's what right. I'm yeah. not going to look for it, but I'm not going to completely dismiss it. If you know, if I yeah, click on Prime or whatever it streams on, and it shows yeah. you, know, they always give you the, the if whatever's new at the top. If I see that, I'm like, yeah, I might watch that. You know, get some good background noise. Right. <laughs> Bella Paul, you have a good week as well. Kenneth Burr's still here for us. Love you, B. Be safe. Oh, no, no. Releasing a bunch Perry of movies Comics the is in the house. Perry. I had to take um, Gabe to a, a birthday party at the mall yesterday, so we walked by the theater. You know, they always have all the posters on the outside of the marquee. There's a mm. bunch of movies that are they're getting re-released as their anniversary, whatever, this summer. Oh, the wow. Spider-Man movies are coming out. Spider-Man, like, they're re-releasing The Mummy. Obviously, Shrek mm. 2 is out now. There's a bunch oh. of movies. Mm. Right. Fan, oh, well, yeah. Phantom Menace. Probably Matrix. Right, Phantom Menace, I yeah. forgot. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, right. um, what you would call it? Fat Bastard had the same voice as Shrek. Well, that's the guy. Yeah, it's the same yeah, guy, but he has the same yeah, yeah. voice. So he has the same exact, like... No, oh, absolutely. Well, he, he did He did do Fat Bastard first. So I guess Donkey has the same voice as... It's, it's bad. <laughs> no, Shrek. Shrek has the same voice. Donkey was. Uh, or, yeah, I'm sorry. That is but your Shrek box doesn't have a, a, a have a vagina for an X. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, your homework for this week was the final installment of Green Shirt Guy's choice for the trilogy, and that would be. Gold member, Austin Powers, uh, 2002. I I was I was like, oh, Jay Roach did all three of these movies, which is pretty cool. Yep. He did all three of them. Um, this one uh, is upon learning that his father has been kidnapped, Austin Powers must travel to 1975 and defeat the aptly named villain Gold Member, who is working with Doctor Evil. The beginning, hilarious. The, this is a hundred percent Moonraker, it, by the way. With, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, with uh, the what you would call it, uh, like Tom Cruise, and like it's almost like a Mission yeah. Impossible take too that is going on at that beginning. Like, yeah. yes, yeah. It felt like this is the start of like a James Bond spy film, like before, <laughs> yes, before the music comes on. <laughs> how about the how about the chick in, in the in the fictional one? Oh, who oh, the Gwyneth wow. Paltrow? Oh, Dixie Norman? Yeah, Dixie yeah, Norman. That, yeah, I died laughing one time. <laughs> I was crying. I, just, I haven't seen this one. I haven't seen any of these in probably 10 years. And this one, I was crying laughing a bunch of spots in this movie. Oh, the uh, Steven Spielberg was directing yes. it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. He does a cartwheel out of the director's chair. Yes. <laughs> <for the dance. laughs> you need mojo, baby. He does the classic little intro as always. Um, I loved it when he was... Uh, when they were, they showed him dancing in the rain, and then they went to Quincy Jones, and he pops oh, yeah. off the screen and go in there. I'm like, that's dope. I like stuff like that. Yeah. That was very very. Well. Um, and I didn't realize that yeah, it was Quincy Jones who was doing the score for the movie. Well, he wrote the right? the, the the theme. That yeah, did, 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 did. that's Ben Hinn. Yeah, right? yeah. It, 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 this had so many major stars in it. It's ridiculous. It did. A lot of great, you know, and I could more, tell more music heavy than any of the other two. I could tell Correct. though, like from the stars it had, that this is 2002. <laughs> like, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, like, you know, nobody's putting the Osbournes in a movie today. hundred like, percent. No. I completely forgot about them until they popped up on screen. I was like, oh yeah, I watched that show. <laughs> but uh, how about the, uh, the hard knock life number in the prison? Yes. Was yes. Great. <laughs> He did a couple numbers. What was the other number that he did? Oh, um, what was the first one he did? I'm trying to think. I forgot. I can't remember now. Yeah. I like the song that he did when um, Daddy's not, Daddy wasn't there. Remember the song? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Daddy wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> With his group. Was, uh, that was great. <laughs> that there was, was there great. some. There were some scenes I had to like turn my head on, like a uh, gold member eating his own skin, or, yeah. or, or when, uh, or it, <laughs> or when uh, also part was going through the uh, the sumo, uh, trying to <laughs> cat fat bats, and they were throwing their underwear into yeah. the hamper. <laughs> oh. 
Scott it's stepped it up. I loved him in the beginning. Robot. With Scott in the beginning, and he was just like, oh, yeah. yeah, all right, whatever. I'm supposed <laughs> to do that. I'm like, all right, Scott. That's what's up. I also Stepping love the fact up. that he loses. He starts losing his hair in just a weird fashion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what oh, else? that scene. That was hilarious. When Alter Pirates had the Britney Spears. Uh, oh, yes! the Britney Spears. So, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. The Fembot, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Mole, 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 mole. Oh, oh, was that was that Fred Savage? Yes, it was. <laughs> yeah, mole, mole. Um, oh, oh, wait about uh, Nathan Lane. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Video 69. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. What I about also, Beyonce, the sight gag. Uh, 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 the, uh, the, uh, I, I think what this movie did well was they took. The, I mean, they they even tongue in cheek say it with with the Ozzy, Ozzy scene. They took the, some jokes from the last movie and did them again, but almost did them better in many cases. Like the the scene with the uh, yeah. with the the silhouette, I was crying, especially when he <laughs> gives birth to Mini Me. I was I was yeah. crying. Laughing. <laughs> that and the the scene where he's standing behind the statue and peeing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come yeah. on! And then, and then when he turns it back on, and he's got the guy laying, in it, and the the, the the security oh. guard's like, "Is he doing what I think he's doing?" <laughs> but what about? Remember when uh, he's behind the sheet, and Mini Me is yeah. on his. Yes. <laughs> How about before that, where where he needs the urine sample, and Mini Me's yeah. sitting there? Oh. <laughs> 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 Oh my goodness! It's safe to say this one made me laugh just as much as all the other ones. Yes, you know, you know what I noticed? It didn't make me Every... laugh as much as two. Mm. I think uh, two was my one favorite. Thing, one thing I noticed: every single one of his villains has a physical injury on him that you can see, or yeah. something wrong with their skin. Yes. Mm. In all three movies, you got Doctor Evil with the scar. You have a uh, gold member with his skin peeling. You have Fat Bastard with his with his weight and his pimples. Each He's one. got pimples all over. Yeah. Him. Oh, pimples all over. Yeah. Every one of his uh, major villains has something wrong with their skin. Yep. Um, Beyonce is Foxy Cleopatra. Mm-hmm. Um, Foxy I did, did, like I mentioned, I think last week I noticed. I don't know if it was because of change of time. But he wasn't as sexually advanced for Beyonce as he was the other two leading women. You know, I correct. was thinking about that because you mentioned it last week, and I yeah. wonder if, and I don't, you know, I'd ha- I'm, we'd have you'd have to go back and find some articles maybe to find out. I wonder if he took a lot of backlash for being pretty overtly sexual in the first two, mm. so he tried to rein it back a little bit, and now, now of course, people are gonna say, well, why didn't you go after the black chick? And I don't think that was. The intention, no. but you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. I agree. Also agree with Cliff. I laugh at the second one way more than I did this one. I don't. Maybe it's just because of the week I had. I, this one hit me right where I needed it, so I was laughing through the whole thing. Yeah. It wasn't. I, I guess it just wasn't like a a very. Uh, it was a very predictable storyline, which oh, I didn't yeah. mind. Why well, I didn't mind, you know what I mean. Just as long as yeah. you make me laugh. It is what it is, but it was very predictable on the way it went. Oh, look um, at the sight gags guess- with Mr. Roboto and the and the uh, <laughs> the, the yeah. translations the at the bottom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was some good, some good um, scenes. Oh, well, old girl visit him and uh, visit Doctor Evil in jail. And they're in jail. And I got the key. He brings Taco yeah. Bell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. The revelation that uh well no, I like the first I like the flashback scenes of Austin and Dr. Evil back oh. in like the Hogwarts yes. like Academy yeah. type thing. <laughs> yeah. That I'm kid who played the kid who played Austin. Perfect. Oh <laughs> perfect. That was perfect. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to the team. I'm not sure. That's not the same kid playing Dr. Evil, right? That's I a different don't kid think player. so. No, okay. I didn't think it was a different Unless it's kid, twins. Yeah. It could be twins. Yeah. It could be. 
Um, but that was you got to know the Doctor Evil and and Austin actually went to the same academy together. And Doctor mm-hmm. Evil thought he was gonna be the Mystery Man of the Year, and it turned <laughs> out that Austin was. And the the subplot of this movie is that Austin Powers' dad never shows up to any of his uh, <laughs> his things. <laughs> um, and then you come to find out that Doctor Evil and Austin Powers are brothers, twin brothers. <laughs> Twin yeah. brothers, yeah. The way that car I was waiting up. for Goldmember to be the third brother because with him <laughs> playing everybody, <laughs> right? <laughs> Can I paint his Yuhu gold? I wasn't too hot on Goldmember though. I, I what makes me laugh about Goldmember, yeah. like I said from the beginning, is I the, a guy I used to work with, and I used to put quote this, especially this one because for whatever reason, and and he was Dutch. So it was even funnier that when he, he would always do it too. <laughs> the whole, the whole, isn't that Vieira? The plan, the whole master plan with preparation H. Had yes, me, had me laugh. yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Especially when they show the, the the little pill or whatever go into the thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I also love Goldmember's car. <laughs> it's green, his gold car. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Austin Powers got the pimp mobile. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the time traveling pimp oh, mobile. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then when he shows up, he's dressed like a pimp too. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's that's right. Right. <laughs> the pimp came. So funny. Mini me turned size. That's too hilarious yeah. when he had the when he had the Austin outfit as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this scene was funny when they were talking about the satellite and he gets hit twice. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> drop the meteor. <laughs> yes. What's good, Black Crow Comics? What's up? Um, I also love where he's talking about. Uh, he's like everybody. It's getting a little crowded in here. Everybody leave. Not you, not oh, you, yeah. not you, not, not you henchmen standing over by there turning knobs for no reason. Not you trying to look, like, trying to look busy. It's a little awkward. I think there was a lot more of, uh, what's it called? Oh, improv in this one. Oh, yeah. There was a lot more improv in this one, yeah. Oh, probably like, or even improv that they like snuck in. Like, all right, we're going to keep this. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, the end, the end yeah, how the fuck did Cleopatra she was always getting kicked in the face every time she showed up <laughs> behind him he would kick her in the face every time like bam <laughs> <laughs> the, the ending with, with, with Goldmember being John Travolta yeah that was, oh uh, that was wild now that forget wild. that Austin being Tom Cruise I was like what is going on well, here? <laughs> and how about Kevin Spacey showing up on screen and you're like oh, oh. Oh yeah, yeah that hey, hit. Hey, I'm like, hey, uh, I'm uh, like that hit, that hit, that hit even like better. That. that hit even better now. You know, <laughs> I'm like, oh, it was easy. Oh. I watched it. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot that he was the hit. <laughs> I love Listen, everybody's reaction once it's been like, oh yeah, that was a oh. If I wanted to make an inappropriate comedy adventure movie now you best believe i'm gonna be calling kevin spacey to play the villain <laughs> i'll never leave anyone alone on set with him but you best believe <laughs> your job it's is like, to follow kevin uh, spacey i don't want to everywhere. challenge you as a director but why are there three people <laughs> on me at all times I'm like, it's in your contract baby it's in your contract <laughs> I, I appreciate that the attention but i can walk around by myself and I'd be like, like Kevin, yeah. do you really want me to answer that, Kevin? Do you really want me to answer that, Kevin? Hey, Come on. Can we talk? Can we talk about Danny DeVito being mini me? Oh, me. Yeah, right. <laughs> that was great. I think he's. I think he stole the show. The surprise. Yeah. he stole the show. <laughs> yeah. At the end, uh, mini me talking with uh, Britney Spears is like he's like yeah, it's like a kickstand. <laughs> <laughs> like kick Can I give you my cell phone number? That's how I, when she said that. I felt real old. Like oh yeah, that's, that's how we used to get women, uh, ladies' numbers. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. You think about it, this movie is like twenty two years old now. Yeah, man. 22 years old. Someone that's wild. Lingo, just like, oh. 
Well, this is back in the era when not everybody had a cell phone. I think yeah. in the second one, doesn't somebody have a pager? Yep. Yeah. And that yeah. took me back. I'm like, man, I had a pager. No. I, I was watching with RJ. He's like, what's that? 2002 definitely was the year where a cell phone became commonplace. Yeah, Correct. Yeah, but they still, weren't the cell was, phones was, of today, though. They were the no, it was the Motorola, uh, though. And you still yeah, had to yeah. pay. Remember that this was also been the era when, if you called after seven, it was to text. or free. Yeah, your minutes. Yeah, <laughs> you get a certain amount of minutes and all that. Yep. Yeah. Long don't remind me about that. Wow. I remember when they used to charge for text messages. I remember that. Yes. Yes. I, I had to. I had to sell my entire Age of Apocalypse set. To pay for myself, yeah. why would you do that? I, 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 why did you do that? <laughs> it was 2002, man. He thought he could get it back it was later. Long, yeah, it was on 2002, uh, 2003 when I had to do that, but I'm almost got the whole collection back now. So I know, Cliff. I, I know. Wow. Listen, I understand, but I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> the only the only time I ever gave up any cherished collectibles mm -hmm. was in 2011, and I'm not going to tell that story now. And it was because I was so down and so it's so out. <laughs> yeah, I was I was a young man. I needed my phone bill play. I, I think my phone bill was like eight hundred dollars. Well, was yeah. that the days where Verizon just smacked you with a bill and you're like, what the hell hey, is yo, going on here? Know, how did you know it was Verizon? Because they did it to <laughs> me, Steve Bezel. I, I signed up for it. I paid yep. one thing. The next bill is like three, $400. And I called. I was like, yep. what is this? And they're like, well, there's all these fees. And, da -da 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 -da. and I was like, yep. oh, hell no. It was Verizon. I still owe yep. money now, but I'm with T-Mobile, so I'm good. <laughs> Verizon play. You know what? I got Verizon now. <laughs> I, had, well, I, I switched. I, just, I have it. Not T-Mobile. It's a whole new world with Verizon these days. A hundred percent. It's it's way better than Sprint. Oh, I, I don't know. Years. Well, Sprint, Sprint was my 2002 phone. cell phone. That's. <laughs> I never had phone. any problems with Sprint. I did. Never. I'm not going to no. go through it and re now. Remind me on Tuesday. I'll give you the full story. I didn't. So you know, it was say, coverage. What's that? I'm trying to think. There's a uh, there's a movie, and I can't remember the the comedian, but he says, he, you know, long story short, fuck what whoever it was. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my long story short, fuck Sprint. Hey, I, I remember that scene with Gold Member when he put both his legs up above his head. Yeah, that was wild. <laughs> All right, like, a lot of the so... bone just made me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> it's the nature of that movie <laughs> but you know there's rumors of Mike Myers is now currently on works on part 4 um, is, for is this going to be this... screen being a new Dr. Evil I would guess you gotta, you you know gotta, I mean? right? yeah, yeah I would guess that that's what's going to happen but remember this is 22 years later yeah, 22 years, and we know we know it doesn't usually go well when they try to go back to the well. Not to you mention, I mean? he's old, man. He is he's old. Right. Yeah, he does look yeah. old. They would have to do like old man Austin or something like that. Uh, yeah, you know? no, but he, he, I think he could still be funny. And that's I the thing. Yeah. yeah, like I don't, I don't, I think he could still be funny. And like <laughs> yeah. 22 well, years later, I almost <laughs> want to say like 22 years later. Like the state of humor has changed a bit, so he could do like almost like have like a new thing of Austin Powers, and it would be where that whole thing about Ozzy Osbourne, where it's the same jokes over. You wouldn't need that because yeah. he could have like new jokes. Well, did yeah. you did you watch the Pentaveret on Netflix? I did not. No. I, uh... It's 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 fully Mike Myers, and he plays multiple characters, and yeah, it's funny. And it's uh, that's all from uh, what you call it. I I married an axe murderer. It's, he yes, that. it's it's yes. Which is one, that's one of my favorite movies. I Absolutely. love, so I married an axe murderer. And I, when I saw it, uh, I went to one of those early releases or early, whatever, sneak preview weekend or whatever. And it actually had a slightly different ending than when I went and saw it uh, again with my friend. Really? Yes. 
And it's and it's crazy. And I was like, Matt, I was like, this was not the ending the first time we saw this, right? Like, I was like, and he's like, no, he's like, it's definitely different. I'm like, this is crazy. Hmm. Um, it wasn't a drastic change, but it was a notable change. All right. And there was Let's more give our his best friend and his mom. Let's give our numbers. We'll start off with Papa Wheeler, who says he's got a book it. He gives it a nine out of ten. 10 Beyonce wasn't bad. Uh, my cameos are amazing and jokers are bangers. Go out with you, green shirt guy. I, I agree. I gotta this one hit me right where I needed it, and I was laughing pretty much from start to so this and and laughing harder at some of the sight gags and I laughed in the last one, so I gotta give it a nine. All right, see Bizzle. I give it an eight, uh, just as good as the first one, but not as good as the second one. Okay, Phil. Um, like a seven point five. It was still good, and it was still funny, and I, I still enjoyed it. Um, I don't know. It's not like my favorite comedy in the world and stuff, but you know, seven point five. I don't think it quite made that eight for me though. All right, Cliff. But it's still funny and still great. Mike Myers. Well, genius. it's it's certainly no Madam Web. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but that's like a four. Like, <laughs> four. Madam Web is a three. No, wait, okay. maybe it's a four. Maybe it's a four. Madam Web gets its own scale. <laughs> we need, we need, no, we need a Sony Spider Verse scale just yeah. for those movies because they're so bad. <laughs> that, no, this movie's an eight. This movie's an eight for me. That's for sure. Okay, I will also give this movie an eight. Uh, good fun wholesome stuff of goal of Austin Powers and um, I actually do look forward to a sequel because I would like to see an old man Austin get back into the game I think that would be hilarious with his dirty jokes it's like an old man I think that would be well uh, dirty man, old man jokes would be even funnier yeah yes. <laughs> I think that would be incredible I'm over here like it's too much of a good thing we should just let it go <laughs> let it go so the average low Besides him, that he could still use, like Michael Caine is still around, Seth yeah. is still around. Yeah, I mean so, Beyonce, if she were to return, would be cool. cool. Yeah, well, so is she really Instagram. hasn't aged in twenty two years. That would be hilarious. <laughs> that she looks the same. That yeah. would be hilarious. <laughs> yeah, bring back, bring back all the all the all the ladies that was in all the awesome uh, horror uh, movies. Maybe he has. Oh, you could see that. Like, I'll have him do like all the singles lady dance. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, you know what? Actually, be almost funny too. I mean, we've talked about a bunch of tons of storyline. If if, you know, you find out that he's actually fathered kids with people all over the place. Oh my goodness, that would be hilarious. Because remember, he doesn't. He didn't use condoms. Right. right. I'm not a sailor, man. All right, so well, that's cool. They member. should the dirty beggars. They go from port to port. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool, member. Uh, thank you, green shirt guy, for putting us through a nice little laugh. Next up, Clifford. What will be our next trilogy, Cliff? Well, I thought about this a lot because I wanted to make sure we were covering something interesting, but also I wanted to make all of you suffer as much as I have. Oh, so- no. So I, for my trilogy, I've chosen Unbreakable. Oh, oh I those. Unbreakable, very nice. Unbreakable is available is available on Max, and Split and Glass are available on Netflix. So everyone has a chance to stream yes. them. Yes. So it goes Unbreakable. It goes uh, Split. Split, and then and it glass. goes Glass. I think uh, Glass is the best one. Mm. Oh, I thought Split was kind Split's of Split's great. <laughs> Split is great. But you know what? And it wasn't until the ending of Split that I was like kind of annoyed. <laughs> uh, side, uh, side note: I have not ever watched Split or Glass. Really? Oh, so you're, oh, yeah, you're going to hear that. It's going to be great. Well, great. What's very wild cut. is is when you when you watch Glass, I don't think it was even announced. Like Split was had been talked about, and yeah. Glass came out like and what? Glass not even out. a year later. Like, oh, he made that one too. Well, remember, it was you know split. what? You After... didn't know until the end of the movie. Rule that too. That, that Absolutely. it was part of the Unbreakable. Um, Wait, you know, right. with Split, with Split, I think it was a secret that Shyamalan was involved, right? 
I think so. No, I don't no, think it wasn't the secret, but the secret was that ending where like you got well. Yeah, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I'm pretty sure <laughs> you got the special ending and then you saw M. Night Shalomon's name in the credits, and you're like, what? Yes. Dude is like dude was like waiting in the wings, being like, I am not letting the last airbender be my legacy. I'm like, I cannot let this happen. So great choice there, Cliff. I'm very, very, very proud of you for doing that because that was a great choice. And I cannot wait for that. Couple new things, uh, announcements before we get out of here. Um, remember to tune in tomorrow night for new keys and hot comics of the week. Why? Because this so far is our prize. It's valued at over $300. I put a little thing together so we don't have to show the books anymore. Like put them up to the screen and stuff like that. Um, so tons of tons of stuff. $300 prize. And we we're even thinking of having a runner-up prize as well. So you need to tune in tomorrow night, 8 p.m., 5 p.m. There is Pacific. no runner-up prize this month. No. This is it. You're the one this that wanted to do the uh, the runner-up. next month. For next month. Oh, this oh sorry. Month. Okay, okay. I'll no runner-up this, this, runner this month. Up. Yo, that April out of your is head. capped out, everybody. <laughs> April is capped out. <laughs> just want to okay. point out that Cliff doesn't want to give out a runner-up prize. <laughs> I don't care. He's the I'll only one. Villain. I'll be the, the villain. You're saying yes. There will be no runner-up prizes. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. What are you, some, you think I'm oh. some kind of Tardarian waving your hand around Hanging like around that? Hanging around like that? Yeah, I'm a Tardarian. My tricks don't work. Only money. Um, and our <laughs> other announcement is that we are going to be doing new comic book day live for a little while. It's Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Uh, it's gonna be something new and different. Uh, I'm gonna still try. You're gonna have to watch to see because I'm still gonna do some filming on Tuesdays that'll transfer over to Wednesdays. Um, watch the video on our channel that'll explain why we're doing this. But you need to tune in new comic book day live. We're continuing the numbers. It's gonna be episode number 94, but it'll be Wednesday at 8 p.m. A couple of pluses is that you know new comic book day is only like a 20, 30 minute video. We're gonna do it for an hour, so you get we'll get a little bit more in depth on certain things, and it allows us to, to free up and do other stuff. We're not gonna stop doing the other way, but for a little break to recharge the batteries and all that, we're gonna do that. See, Bizzle, are you gonna be joining us for New Comic Book Day? I will. I won't have any new comics, but I will be there. All right. Excellent. 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 So make sure you tune in New Comic Book Day live Wednesday at 8 p.m. Let's get to these comments and then we'll get out of here. New comics because you're still paying off your old Verizon bill? <laughs> <laughs> um, Meatwad number one came in. Thank you for joining us today. Phil's Treehouse came in. Thank you for joining us today. S. Vaughn 82 came in. Thank you for joining us. Just, uh, thank you for joining us today. Papa Willie was with us today. Thank you for being with us. Uh, Christina Payne was in the house. Thank you for joining us. DBS and Chill was in the house. Thank you for joining us. Trev the Shipping Guru was in the house. Thank you for joining us. Uh, J. Mark Golis joined us tonight. Thank you very much. Kenneth Bird was in the house. Thank you for joining us. The Bella Paul joined us tonight. Thank you very much. Evil's Comics was in the house. Thank you for joining us tonight. Dun, 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 dun. Strange dog comic stuff was in the house. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, Perry Comics was in the house. Thank you for joining us tonight. Comic Cap Coll Collectibles was in the house. Thank you for Rich. joining us tonight. And that was it, ladies and gentlemen. So, I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Remember, if you have not liked and subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that like button. We truly appreciate it. Uh, remember to tune in tomorrow night, 8 p.m., 5 p.m. Pacific, for new keys and hot comics of the week, where we go over all the new books, all the hot keys that are coming out. We have our end of the month. You get a chance to win our end of the month prize. Remember, 8 p.m., 5 p.m. Pacific, tomorrow night. So, for myself, for Cliff, for Phil, for Green Shirt Guy, for C. Bizzle, and for Papa Wheelie. We love you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Black is like the brightest day. Where are the heroes?